This presentation is to help you draw ions and calculate their charges. If you can't draw atomic structure yet, you need to learn how to do this first. There's a separate PowerPoint on this. OK, so how do you recognise when an ionic bond forms? Well, an ionic bond will always form between a metal and a non-metal ion. And as such, if there's a compound containing a metal and a non-metal, then it will be an ionic bond that's holding them together. So how do they form? Well, the metal atom gives its outer electrons to the non-metal atom, so they re both result in a full outer shell of electrons. It also results in the atoms becoming charged particles known as ions, hence ionic bonding. The ionic bond is the force of attraction between the oppositely charged, so the positive and the negative ions. It's very important that you write this as a definition. If you're asked what an ionic bond is, it's not the giving and taking of electrons. That's how it's formed. The actual bond is the force of attraction between the oppositely charged ions. So why does this happen? Well, atoms are more stable when they've got a full outer shell of electrons. Let's have a look at that in diagram form. So if we start by drawing an atom of magnesium, magnesium has got 12 protons because of the bottom number in the periodic table here and 12 neutrons. It's the difference between these two numbers. Because it's got 12 protons, it's also got 12 electrons. Again, if you're not sure on this, look back at the voiceover on atom, uh, drawing atoms. So, how does this get a full outer shell of electrons? Well, there's two things that can happen here. Either these two electrons can be given away so that the outer shell disappears and the second shell here becomes the outer shell and that's then full. Or it could gain six electrons. Now, it's more energetically favourable to lose two electrons than to gain six. It, basically, it takes less energy to do that. So let's draw that. So those two electrons are going to be given away. We'll still have the same number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus. I haven't done anything with that. And I've got the electrons that are left over. The outer shell disappears. So we now need to work out the charge. We show that by putting square brackets around the um, the ion that's left and putting the charge in the top right hand corner but we need to work out what that's going to be. The best way of doing this is looking at the number of protons because each proton has got a one plus charge so if I've got 12 protons as I have here because remember they haven't changed then I've got a 12 plus, uh, a 12 plus charge and we need to look at the number of electrons because they've got the negative charge so now we've got 10 electrons because we lost two of the initial 12. So if we look overall, we've got two more protons than what we have electrons. Each positive will cancel out a negative charge. So I'm left with a two plus charge overall. I've got two more protons than what I have electrons, two more positives than I have negative charges. So that charge goes here. We can show that in a couple of other ways. We can show it as mg, the symbol in the periodic table, the 2 plus, top right. Or we can look at the number of electrons in each shell. So 2 in the first shell, then 8 in the second, overall having a 2 plus charge. So that's an example of a positive ion. Now let's have a look at a negative ion. So here's fluorine. Again, using the information in the periodic table, I can tell that there are nine protons, that's the number at the bottom of the box, and 10 neutrons, that's the difference between the two numbers. I also know that there are um, nine electrons because the number of electrons equals the number of protons in an atom. So let's draw those in. We can see here that there is a space for an extra electron to fit, and that's what's going to happen to fill the outer shell. So drawn again to the right hand side here, I've got the extra electron in there, that's the red cross, and I've still got the nine protons, ten neutrons in the nucleus, that hasn't changed. Okay, so let's work out the charge. Let's do the same as we did last time. We've got nine protons, which are worth one each, so nine plus charge there. We've got ten electrons, they're each worth one minus charge. And so overall, I've got one extra minus, then I have positives. So I've got a one minus charge. 
Again, I write that at the top right. I don't have to put the one here because I've got one lot of it. It's a bit like saying in algebra, one A. You don't say one A, you just say A. Okay, same thing here. Again, we can show this in other ways. So we can just have the symbol with the minus charge, or we can have the electronic configuration. So the two comma eight with the one minus charge. Okay, now you try these examples. Here's the first three. Pause the video, try it, and see how you get on. The answers are coming in a second. Okay, so with the sodium, we've got one electron in the outer shell, so that is lost, so that's here. That's lost, and so overall, we end up with one more proton than we've got electrons, so we end up with a one plus charge. With the calcium, there are two electrons in the outer shell. It's those that are given away. So we end up with two more protons in the nucleus. Then we have electrons, protons being positive, mean that we have a two plus charge here. With the aluminium, the aluminium, I don't like how this is drawn. That electron should be down here, but never mind. It's got three electrons in the outer shell. So it gives those three electrons away to something else that it's reacting with. And we end up with a three plus charge because overall it will have three more protons than it has electrons. And a few more here. Once again, pause the video and then see how you get on. Answers come in in a second. So with the oxide, the oxygen has got space for two electrons, one here and one here. So it will gain two electrons to get a full outer shell. So that means it will have two extra negative charges. It's gained two electrons. Each electron has a one minus charge. The chloride ion has got space for one electron to go just here. And so when it gains that electron, the electron being a one minus charge, the overall ion will have a one minus charge on it as well. And the nitride. So here I've got space for one, two, three electrons. So it's going to gain three electrons. So if it gains three electrons, it's going to end up with a three minus charge.